another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And it is Saturday, which means it is Bolo Day. What we nice. try to do is we try to tell you what sold on eBay. Uh, give you a little bit of a deep dive into it, things to look out for uh, when you're out there, and the where and the why of it. And here with the where and the why to start mm-hmm. it off is Mr. Magazine. All right, Paper Guy, what season is it? Uh... Rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season, Elmer season. It may be, but it's really football season, and it's like the stock market. You know, one good game, these guys are going crazy. So here we have the Andre Swift Lions 2020 rookie auto patch card out of 99. It's been sitting around for over a year. Uh, just sold it for 50 bucks. He had a good game. That's all, <laughs> that's all that matters. One good game, boom. So basically any of the... Uh guys in their first couple of years you just you hold your price on them and you hope they have a yeah, good game absolutely yeah Why wow not? and lo- the best part about this is i only listed this you know about a year ago because it was a signed rookie you know he was you know decent but he didn't have any great games i got tons of his rookies just sitting around now so if he's a good season now i can bring him out and sell them all so all right nice next up guess who else had a good game nick chubb yep hey, you didn't nick, give me an opportunity oh, to guess well all you got to do is be able to read so 2018 Phoenix rookie patch auto out of 125. This one sold for 95 bucks. It's got the signature. It's got the part of the football. I mean, you can't beat it. You know, if you like Nick Chubb or the Browns. Oh, Panini Phoenix is a yep. brand. Yep. Oh, okay. Because yep. it because you're talking about a football patch. And to anybody out there that doesn't know, <laughs> this is the big thing in sports cards. Um, they'll take a, a swatch of the jersey or or a piece of a football or a piece of. Now, what is the significance of the football? He touched it. Was it like a special one, like a touchdown? Well, it was, it was, he had, well I think or? it was just using the game that he played in, and you know, oh, okay, yeah. okay. So it wasn't like his first touchdown. I don't believe so. Okay. No, if that was the case, be worth a lot more. Yep. Next up, okay, it's uh, also uh, laser tag season. Did you know that? I yeah. did. I did not. Get yeah, the this memo. comes every four years, but it is laser tag season. It's like Haley's comment. <laughs> Vintage 1986 Star Sensor Star Worlds of Wonder laser tag guns. Uh, we had these. Oh, geez, we just listed these. All right, so they just sold uh, thirty-six bucks. But you do see, see these all over the place. This was popular in the eighties when I was a kid. Um, they're out there. You could probably grab them five, ten bucks at a you know flea market garage sale. Now whatever. I saw there in your condition there. You're you're saying. I mean, did you test it, or you don't even know if it works or not? I did not test it, but I think the battery compartment looked clean, so that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you set thirty four dollars for or thirty six dollars for something plus shipping. Yeah, uh, for something that you don't even know if it works or not. Yeah, I so mean, you can you find know, that out there. If we tested it, you know, and it worked, you know, maybe you get forty, fifty bucks. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Next up, uh, the Buffalo Bills are hot as a pistol. Uh, I had this listed. This is the Frank Reich Buffalo Bills autograph ticket stub, but it's from the biggest comeback game in Buffalo Bills history, where I think the Bills lost to the Houston Oilers. Right? Titans. The Bills. The Titans. Wasn't it the Titans at that time? You think it was the Titans then? That's great. 1993 Titans. Oh. It, it was Warren Moon of the Oilers, but hey, who's counting? Wasn't it in Tennessee, though? But it did. Is it really? Yeah. You're kidding me. It says Orchard Park. No, no. Wasn't, didn't they play Tennessee, though? But I think they were the Houston Oilers back then. Oh. That's a long time ago. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, <laughs> just, uh, you know, message us back and see who's right. Oh, I'm thinking of that when they lost. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Michael Carter, Jets, 2001 Panini Immaculate. Rookie shoe patch, one of one. Only one in history of this player, and it sold for 150 bucks. I took 150 on it. I had it up for 195 for a while, but uh, um, he's an okay player, but it's a one of one shoe patch. So, you know, if you had Brady on this, it could be five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Can I ask where the rest of the shoe is? Uh, that is a good question. Yeah, I don't know. They, I would imagine they made more pieces, but they're not one of ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is my guess, but hey, what do I know? But that's a nice-looking card, though, also. Very, oh, Definitely it's it's super it thick. Is. It's it's probably like a quarter-inch thick, yeah. That's a nice-looking nice card. Yep. Yep. And Joe Burrow had a good game. 2020 Panini, uh, Airborne Pink Rookie, PSA 10. Uh, I took 200 bucks on this one. Very cool. And that's just a standard issue card? Oh, it's an insert. It's a pink airborne insert card, and it's a PSA 10. But it's not a super rare card, though. No, it's probably like 50 bucks if it's raw. Okay. You know, yeah. Yep. You know, if it's a 9, it's probably 100 bucks. The 10 makes it 200. Wow. So, and lastly, I just took an offer on this. Picked this up, I don't know, maybe a month ago. Uh, 1980-81 Tots basketball complete set with the Bird Irving Magic Johnson rookie. Uh, that card's an SGC 6.5. So um, I put 1900 on this. It was 2100 with the discount, 1900 
a um, lot of people making low offers of a thousand and so forth. So I did some researching with recent comps, and I took fifteen hundred bucks for it. Still so, not bad though. Yeah, no, not bad. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I've got. I think if you add everything together, I have it will, might add up to whatever the lowest priced item you sold was there. So. Oh, the. <laughs> the Andre Swift or the ticket stub? Uh, TWA flight menu, 1973, New York City. It's good looking. And good looking. I was going to say, yeah. nothing screams 1970s quite like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, people like that style. So when you find things out there with that style, buy them. And I know um, I don't <clears> deal at all in furniture uh, and that sort of thing, but I hear people all the time talking about they can't give away old furniture. Everybody wants the uh, the mid uh, mid century mod is what everybody wants right now. Hmm. The next thing coming along is going to be the hippie stuff and then this stuff. So we're about twenty years away from this stuff here being hot as a pistol. Um, hmm. So definitely do pick it up uh, when you when you're out there. If you're on the younger side. Put it away. You'll be able to sell it in no time at all when you find this kind of stuff. I'm a little long in the tooth, so I need the 20 bucks now. Um, but the other thing on this over here, not only does the style sell, but it's also TWA, and uh, that is a well-collected airline. So this had a lot of things going for it. Um, and, and the fact that Mr. Magazine said, "Wow, that looks," you know, it's it's caught his eye as well. Is it regular it's menu size or smaller? Uh, smaller size menu. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, next item we have, this literally sold just before the show started today, so I wanted to bring it up. Eastman Kodak Company, 1950s, lot of eight pencils, mechanical negative. Um, How'd you know the 50s? <laughs> I'm just curious. You know. <laughs> they just looked to be 50s. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, bro. Um, sure. I got, uh, took $28 offer on it, um, <laughs> but Kodak was obviously the, you know, the, the Rochester was known as Kodak Town, as a matter of fact. Yeah. They were the biggest employer in town. A lot of people worked there. Around wherever you are that's watching this, if you had an old industrial area and it did have a big uh, employer like Kodak, hmm. you probably can find things like this in people's estates. Pick them up. Uh, I mean, again, you're in an estate sale, as I always say. What are you going to pay on something like this? <clears throat> what do you want for these pencils? Yeah. Um, you got to say it just like that. These yeah. pencils. Yeah, right. um, they probably go, I don't know, give me a couple of bucks. So you would pay $2 for the, those eight of them. It would be a quarter a piece. You could turn around and sell them for $28. It's not they didn't call it Kodak Country instead of Kodak Town. It's like saying Tesla Town, but then you wouldn't say Tesla Country. But, hey, what do I know? Moving on. <laughs> I'm very we are bored. all over the place I'm bored today. tonight. <laughs> I'm seeing this. The live show after this is going to be a fun, fun train wreck. <laughs> um, next item. Shirley Temple. Oh, it really is. It really is yeah, Shirley yeah. Temple. Uh, Home Movies Magazine, November 1938. Shirley Temple Thanksgiving Mickey Mouse. Wow, that's loaded. Um, right there. Wow. And that is early from 1938. Uh, early Mickey Mouse uh, ad. Donald, Donald Duck, Duck got ad snubbed. Too. He got snubbed. He did. He couldn't, didn't fit. Um, but this magazine is actually a lot more common than you would think that it is. Home Movies Magazines. They are out there. You tend to find a lot of them together. Most of them aren't worth very much whatsoever. It is usually a sucker bet magazine. Um, if you get a, a Halloween cover, it will sell. You get this one, obviously it will sell. But if you've just got normal ones with normal covers, I've lotted them out before and once in a while I've gotten rid of them. Did you pay six bucks for it? Uh, no, I paid about 40 cents at a flea market. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, but just know that this is not a magazine you want to buy in bulk you want to cherry pick this right. magazine. Uh, hopefully that does help a little bit out there. Next item we have, bad picture over here because it didn't really look like that. It was just uh, the way the light shone down on it. Um, Little Red Riding Hood, Golden Book, Charles Perrault, Shiva Productions, 1969. Mm. You find this kind of book, a lot of these, this happens to be the Little Golden Book one. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 works perfectly. Um, <laughs> but... There were puppet storybooks, and then there were books like this over here with the uh, lenticular covers. You can buy them for a dollar. Uh, you can buy them at estate sales. You can buy them at flea markets. You can buy them uh, house calls. You can buy them at thrift stores. You can buy them. These are late 60s, early 70s. They are out there. Always make sure that the cover does have the lenticular piece. Kids used to pull it off. Uh, if it does not have that, you do not want to buy it. 
you can get twenty dollars on up for any of them as long as it's not absolutely hammered on. So you can find these easy twenty bucks. You'll pay a dollar. You're welcome. Uh, next <laughs> item we have nice. up is <clears throat> Neely's photographs. Uh, Greater America how hardcover War of eighteen ninety eight Dewey Islands Philippines. Mm. This actually is the other side of the sucker bet where I thought it was a really good book, a much better book than that. Yeah. I think I paid $2 for it. I really stepped up to yeah. the plate on this one. Um, I did get the $44 out of it. But when you take a look at it, if this works now, which it does this time, on this one, um, it's got a lot of really nice pictures in there of Cuba, Philippines, War of 1898, all that kind of stuff. Um, I thought it would go for a lot more. And it only went for $44. That being said, these are out there. You can find them. Uh, just don't get you know, tricked into paying $20, $25 for them by thinking they're really, really nice. You can get them for $10 or under, pick them up because they can sell for $44. And the last item we have over here, uh, you saw this mm -hmm. in a haul video. You saw this on the community tab underneath one of my posts. And now you see it sell. I paid one dollar for this. Um, mm, nice, perfect timing. It was perfect timing. Paid one dollar for it. It had sat out at a sale for four or five days wow. for a dollar. Get it home. I was all excited about it. Then I suddenly saw this: five pages mm. missing. I said, "You know something? People are going to buy it for the cover." Right. And sure enough, they are. A subscriber reached out to me and said, "Well, of course you know." what the jack-o'-lantern is, right? And we'll ask Mr. Magazine if he knows what the jack-o'-lantern is. I did Mickey not Mickey Mouse? He said, oh, know. that's Teddy Roosevelt, of course. Oh, well, yeah, that was my next choice. Well, yeah, well, it says the name <laughs> down there, right? Uh, well, yeah, but that didn't have to do with yeah. the pumpkin, but, yeah. and I said, oh, yeah, of course that's Teddy yeah. Roosevelt, yeah, which is, is half full, yeah. Which is why I didn't mention <clears throat> Teddy Roosevelt at all in the listing. Yep, of, course. <laughs> of course I knew it was. I was trying to hide it to yeah, take you know, my you know sales. Doing, hey, it's still sold. It's still sold. Um, but again, you find anything Halloween out there, definitely get it listed. That is one of the holidays along with Christmas that sells year-round, uh, but it does pick up a little bit this time of year. So to get $43 out of a magazine, missing five pages that had been sitting on a table for four days that I paid a dollar for, I know I'm happy. Yep. And uh, Me too. You know what would make me even happier? Probably hitting the like button. That what would, do I know? That would make me much, much happier. All right, everybody. Uh, do comment down below, and we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.